In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct a one-way within subjects ANOVA on ranks, as well as a paired t-test on ranks. I mentioned in the textbook that this is a perfectly viable option in statistics, and I give you references in the textbook to support you conducting analyses this way. So the first step to conducting a one-way within subjects ANOVA on the ranks is you need to rank the data. And you rank the data across levels, not across people, as you would in a Kruskal Wallace, for example. So in this case here, case two, the junior doctor provided a confidence rating of four, and the corresponding senior doctor provided that doctor with a competence rating of three. You can and probably should start the ranking from one to two to three to four, depending on how many levels there are in the within subjects factor. In this case, there are only two levels. So I've got the possibilities of a rank of one or two in whole numbers. And in this case here, I gave a rank of one to the value of three, and a rank of two to the value of four. And the same thing would be applied even if the values were lower in value, but the ranking would be the same. So in this case here, a value of two also got a rank of one, and a value of three got a value of two. And so twos and ones in a within subjects design with only two levels should probably appear quite often. In no cases in this data file was the larger rating provided by the senior doctor. So in no case was a ranking of two provided by the senior doctor. However, there are ties. So when there's a tie, you simply have to sum the rankings together and divide by two. And the same rule applies if you had three, four, or five levels, and you had three data points associated with the same rank. You would sum the ranks three, four, five, for example, and then divide the sum of three, four, and five by three and provide each value that averaged rank. In this case here, two plus one is three divided by two gives 1.5. And so for this case, a ranking of 1.5 was provided for both the confidence rating and the competence rating. Once you have your ranks set up, you can conduct a one-way within subjects ANOVA. As a replacement to the Friedman's ANOVA or the Wilcoxon signed rank test or the sign test, so click on Analyze, General Linear Model, Repeated Measures, and I'm going to add two factors to my factor one. There's only one factor in this study, so I'll click Add, Define. I'm going to place the Confidence Ranking in the first level and Competence Ranking in the second. Click on Options, Descriptive Statistics and Estimates of Effect Size. Click Continue and click OK. And so SPSS is testing the hypothesis that these mean ranks are equal to each other, 1.92 versus 1.08. So Mochley's test of sphericity does not apply because there are only two levels. And here is the test of the within subjects factor, which has a F of 145 with 1 and 29 degrees of freedom, is statistically significant, less than 0 0.001. Let's just push that out a bit, see what we get. So even at 10 decimal places, we're still in the zeros, which you might recall is more statistically significant than what was obtained from the Friedman ANOVA, which from memory was something like 0 0.000006. But the partial A to squared is actually exactly the same. Kundal's W comes out exactly at 0.833. So that's why I say in the textbook that the one way within subjects ANOVA on rank data is actually essentially the same thing as Friedman's ANOVA slash Kendall's W and why you should feel confident that you can do a one way within subjects ANOVA on rank data. So just to round things out, I'm going to conduct the paired sample t-test on the ranks as well, just to show you that it gives me the same result as the one way within subjects ANOVA on the ranks. So click on Analyze, Compare Means, Paired Sample T-Test. So I'm going to put my confidence ranking in variable 1 and competence ranking in variable 2 and click OK. And that gives me a T-value of 12.04, testing the difference between the same mean ranks as that was observed for the one way within subjects ANOVA. And that is statistically significant with 29 degrees of freedom and a P less than 0 0.001. Now I'll show you that the t-value, if you, as I've shown several times in the textbook, if you square a t-value, you'll get the corresponding f-value. So 12.042 times 12.042 equals 145.009. And here's that 145.00 something to the decimal place is exactly the same thing. 
So this is the one way within subjects ANOVA on the ranks, giving me a partial eta squared, which is identical to the Kendall's W statistic, which we know is exactly the same thing as the Friedman ANOVA test. And then finally, the paired sample t-test on the rank data. So a lot of similarities and correspondences across these analyses, and it's useful to know that if you want to have some flexibility about conducting your analyses, possibly in the most powerful way, and possibly using something like bootstrapping, which is available for statistics like the paired sample t-test.